Hello Malty Micro Distillery Malt Masters. I'm Ralphie, welcome to the Bothy, welcome to another whiskey review and a big malt mention thank you goes to Adam. Um, Kai Zock. Zock. <laughs> I'm afraid there's no way I'm going to get the pronunciation right. So I've done my best. Moving on. Welcome to Ralphie Review 967, in which is a review of an Irish whiskey, which is part of a series um, in which I review the winners within the categories of the Oswiz. .co.uk. You'll find a link below. That's the online Scotch Whiskey Awards. This has been the second year and in 2022 on November the 5th uh, as the fireworks were going off outside. Roy Duff and myself, Roy's got the Aquavit channel and he does regular Thursday evening uh, live streams which I recommend you go and check out and participate in if you're interested. And uh, the two of us, as seasoned onlineers, co-host these awards, which are not sponsored by the industry, um, and they are completely directed by the democratic vote of anybody who's online and interested, interested in whiskey. And the votes are basically placed on six nominations with each of the nine categories and um, it, the nominations are selected by online, informed, experienced whiskey people. There you go. Very simple template, nice straightforward model, and we feel that it does work, despite little teething troubles now and again. But, you know, it's early days yet, and I think that one of the things I'm pick, I've picked up on is that for Irish whiskey fans, uh, calling... Um, a pure uh, single pot still or a pot still style of Irish whiskey, a blend, because it's a blend of malted and unmalted barley, is not a fair designation. It should still be regarded as a single malt because it's using single type of grain, um, but just part of the grain is malted and another part of the grain is not. So fair play. So let me see now. In category number eight, the winner was red breast, 15 year old, bottled at 46%. I've just poured a glass because I'm going to be reviewing it. And um, a very popular winner. But there again, every nomination within this category of the world's um, best world whiskey, right? Best world whiskey. So best whiskey in the world that's not actually scotch. And this is category number eight out of nine. So we've got one more category to do in my next review, number 968. And uh, the other nominations were Cotswolds. Uh, the first really visible English distillery that's been getting a lot of attention now. It's not the first, but it's the first really visible one from my perspective as, as an onliner, which is getting a lot of attention simply because at a relatively young age, the quality shows. It really, really shows. There are other, other English distilleries which have started before Cotswolds, but the results were kind of mixed so it never grabbed people's attention. But um, Cotswolds, bottled at 46%, again, I mean, all the whiskies in the nominations were a minimum strength of 46% or cask strength, nothing, and I mean nothing, at 40%, not even 43%. I think that is very, very telling about the direction that whisky fashion is going. Um, another nomination was Dingle, Dingle Irish Whiskey. And the third one was Cavalan from Taiwan. Uh, we have an American whiskey, an American bourbon whiskey, in the style of Old Forester. Well, not the style of Old Forester, made by Old Forester, the brand. And also Powers John's Lane was another nomination, 12 year old, um, which I'm hoping to review later this, this year, actually. 
and um, but interestingly out of the six nominations for the best world whiskey three were Irish and it really shows you the affinity that Scotch whiskey drinkers have um, with Irish whiskey and how readily Scotch whiskey drinkers will interchange Scotch with Irish just to get a bigger range of barley grain flavours from distillate but the winner um, and I think actually a, quite a worthy winner is the 15 year old Redbreast single pot still from Middleton Distillery in the south of Ireland and this is produced by Pernod Ricard and I recently reviewed another category winner in the form of Redbreast 12 year old cask strength which frankly it didn't impress me because the casks were significantly under influencing the results the casks were not participating very effectively despite the cask strength delivery but with the 15 year old it's a whole different ball game in this one as soon as you nose it you're getting a much more proactive engagement between cask and spirit which is beautifully balanced and very successfully done. Whoever has put this together really, really, really knows what they're doing and is an absolute consummate professional. And there you go. On the nose, unpeated, relatively light, aromatic whiskey with lots of toffee notes and some mint notes, some green notes, um, including the tiniest hint of wintergreen, angelica most definitely, a touch of parsley funnily enough, and notes of celery. There's also a soft background apple note there that tends to get hidden by the presence of the oak so you can see there's some good positive aromatic oak coming through which you tend to get from heavily toasted casks which have been properly allowed to rest and oxygenate before the casks are then filled with the new mixed spirit. That matters. Taste. Gentle arrival. Nice and dry. Beautifully crisp, stringent, underripe green apple. Toffee. Uh, a background oak infused vanilla note mintiness particularly in the latter part of the development into the finish, finish and a lovely consistent background spiciness which incorporates a little bit of allspice, cinnamon and what's that other one? <laughs> Clove, that's the other one. Really first impressions are this is a really well made, well put together, characterful Irish whiskey. I'm adding a drop of water. I'm not adding much. I should have slowed that down a wee bit. I'll here I'll do it in front of the camera so you can actually see it. About two millilitres. That's about it. Doesn't need much. Um, one thing that can confuse the drinker about Irish pot still whiskey is that a producer can say it's unchill filtered and yet when you add water the whiskey remains clear. I just want to remind you that sure you should see a little bit of haziness if it's not been heavily heavily filtered but when you triple distill a whiskey, which you do when you're making pot still style whiskey, because you need that extra run through the still to activate the flavours and the yield out of the unmalted barley, which you can't really effectively do in a double pot distillation. And um, this means with triple distillation that there is more reflux there is more refinement and there is less overt barley oils coming out 
of the grain. However, that should be replaced with some wood oils coming out of active casks. So just to remind you, you may find distilleries will tell you, oh no, no, hand and heart, we don't chill filter. But what they're omitting to say is that they're still extensively filtering without the chill to get roughly the same result. And this is where it is so easy for all of us because of these technicalities that the industry really holds on to. The, the industry prides itself collectively in being transparent and tr traditional, but they're also quite traditional in the opaqueness of tra their transparency. I hope that helps you kind of get your head around the situation. Um, I've spent enough time around whiskey distillers to know that they tend to keep the cards close to the chest about what they do and how they prepare the whiskey. So you've got to go in your own judgment. It would really help if you have, um, I mean, for example, <laughs> quick change of subject. Where does it say it? It doesn't, does it? It really doesn't. No. There's a lack of information, a lack of transparency. But never mind. Um, I mean, there's there's plenty of baloney, right? Plenty of blarney. If you're Irish, you'll understand that. I'll give you a wee a wee readout of this. Where's my where's my steampunker? I'm going to read some Irish blarney here. This is classic. An uncompromising dedication to quality and the enduring tradition of Irish pot still whiskey is the hallmark of Redbreast. Maybe it is. Who knows? Cheers. Taste. I've added some water. More ripe fruit and the arrival. More intense. A lovely, rich, sweet and sour. This is so well put together. This is this is such uh, an upgrade from the 12 year old cask strength and they're roughly the same price. My advice is go for the 15 year old, not the 12 year old cask strength. It lingers a bit. 15 years, you should be expecting a good solid oak cask interaction and you're getting it. You're getting it wonderfully well, it's very good, but the finish, the finish is a little bit short because however they've processed this, they have filtered it extensively because it's nice and crystal clear. You can add as much water as you want. I seriously doubt that is going to change much and that's a shame. But this is what you get with corporations. Corporations, by default, it's just the way they're structured. They, they kind of take some of the life out of the product. It's not all it could be, put it that way. Where's my malt marks? Whiskey malt mark. Nice and slightly resinous in the development, quite complex. That mintiness gets subdued a little bit as the cask exerts itself more. But it's a light, crisp whiskey. It doesn't linger in the palate because it's not been structured that way. But um, still, as an Irish whiskey, I recommend it to you. And I'm going to give this... ...84 out of 100. And that is a... Get my cards in the right order. A whiskey with an E, but that's important, whiskey malt mark. There we go. Now if you pop back to my next review, number 967 extras. I shall be returning to an opinion um, on Irish whisky, uh, which is going to be enhanced by feedback I got from uh, an Irish whisky online mate of mine called Laurie. So I hope you'll join us because I'm going to give you even more authentic from source 
Irish whiskey information that will help you decide what you want to buy and what you should be looking at in terms of Irish whiskey. Well, I'm done here. Where's that Clivey clicker? This means this is my big red button that switches my camera on and off. Now, the camera is already on, which can only mean one thing. I'm about to switch the camera off. See you soon.